Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokolover. Of course, we have Fortress Kozvinsky Kamen. All Yazov was, saw was a big flat rock in the middle of nowhere, but this was to be the last bastion of the Russian people. The new command center here under Kozvinsky Kamen would ensure that nothing could stop the final plans for revenge on Germany. The Earth would absorb the blows from even the strongest nuclear weapons, and those sheltered inside would survive to emerge as an avenging angels for the motherland. <clears throat> Construction. It already began some time ago, and it could just barely make out the massive concrete and steel circular doorway that was led deep into the mountain. All the bombs had, to ex had experience being underground at one point or another, but no subterranean structure would truly compare to this operation. He thought of what Karbyshev would say if he saw this, and what his little state had become. For some reason, it turned to his stomach. A ringling doubt... In the back of his mind, told him that something was off. He remembered the doubts he heard from Karbyshev just before his death, and his words were right about right and wrong. They left a sour taste in his mouth as he walked towards what was to be his wonder of the world. Surely Karbyshev would agree that this was a necessity or necessary. Sadly, he was doing surely he was doing the right thing for Russia. Such thoughts cannot be entertained. <clears throat> if you'd like to read about better industrial equipment, go right ahead. This happens every campaign, and I kind of want to speed things up a little bit more. And so, excellent, very excellent. <clears throat> the Russian National Army. <clears throat> From a vantage point overlooking the train yard, training yard in two men, Captain Rodian watched his men train. It wasn't like it used to be, the Army of the Black League, and he was, should know. He'd been there since the start. Rodian had been one of the good soldiers who followed Karnavashev east after it became clear that the Soviet Union would fall. The days after they arrived in Omsk were a simpler time and with simpler duties for the army that they had built. In the old days, the infantry were hardly more than ditch diggers and military fortification builders with a few more seasoned teams that would hunt, uh, hunt bandits naturally. Even Karbyshev's plan, dig in, prepare for the day when war would be upon them. Rodian had known it was a naive plan, and he had always known that no victory could be won as a hermit state. It was the sole reason that Rodian, Rodian was still alive, while the rest of the old guard had died during Yazov's ascension. Rodian eyed the instructor, teaching tactics Karbyshev would have never trained and thought to teach them. How to saw enemy lines, how to clear minefields, how to sweep and hold buildings. The army of the Black League was ready now to attack, not merely to defend. It was no longer simply the army of Omsk, it was the Russian National Army. And I'm ready to pass by Russia right now. We are currently going ahead and launching a military intervention into the Ural Legion. Or not, Ural Legion. The Ural League. Which might piss off the WRRF, but I don't really care at this point. We made those four other divisions, like I said, at the end of yesterday's episode. And we got a couple comments to go through as well. Even though I would still like to keep doing some of this stuff first. Now, let's go. We'll make one. Uh, we'll make one in Omsk. A read down in Omsk probably seems pretty, pretty smart to do. Alright, let's go and grab that, and the next focus, shall we? So yesterday we found where Pavel Patov was, after a little bit of a <clears throat> uh, finagling, and then, oh, yes, a will of honor. Most soldiers are mere men and sheer vulnerabilities. The average soldier, no matter his courage, will f flee, rather than risk being crushed by a tank, roasted by a flamethrower, mowed down by machine gun fire. Our soldiers, therefore, must be more than merely average. They must be unthink unthinkable, or must be unthinking in their dedication to Russia, the Black League, and the Glakovar. They must never question orders, nor harbor any mercy in their hearts. They must not give a single step to the enemy, no matter whether it costs one of the numbers or a thousand. If the Germans think us so inhuman, then we shall gladly show them what that truly means. And we're still training the book, because we still have a few weeks left, so... Yeah, better industrial equipment looks pretty nice. <clears throat> and we have about 52 days left, which is totally fine with me. And research will be done relatively soonish, and we still have some more mounting debt, which sucks. Which sucks a lot, but once we take out the WRRF... We should do relatively okay, because we have more civilian factories then, but we'll see what happens. <clears throat> uh, let's see, recovery rate, division, defense of core territory. I want definitely that one. Anything over here, infantry weapons, it's all blueprints. So, Central Siberian Federation draws closer to Japan, huh? Will they spend the yen in Novo Sibiris? Maybe. Monitored Dodo China. So as long as it retains a civilian mindset, a soldier cannot be effective. So how many Germans escaped justice because of a soft-hearted conscript was gripped by the thoughts of pity? How many cowards fled the field, thinking only their selfish desire to return home and live normal lives? Soldiers must come to understand that they are no civilians no longer. The weakness bred by peace must be excised from their souls. Every recruit must be inured to violence and, and suffering before he ever sets foot on the battlefield by any means necessary. Nothing they endure at our hands could ever be as terrible as the possibility of defeat. Test of strength. Leonid was firmly blindfolded and packed off on a truck to be dropped off into the wilderness. This was simply another test, he thought. But he remembered those who had not passed, and the state been in, and they had been in the state they had been in when they were finally found. He was aware of the price of failure. <clears throat> we are here. Send him off. Good luck, comrade. It was then unceremoniously dumped into the snow. It was freezing, and all he had was a standard issue overcoat. He took off his blindfold and looked around. He couldn't even see the truck through the blinding snow. But it was given a compass, and so it began. If he headed south, he might be able to hit a road before he froze to death. 
When the fu sun finally rose on a frozen and exhausted Leonid, and the snow finally stopped driving down, he fell to his knees and wept. For once there was his base camp and all to make your comforts. They had to remove one of his toes later, but it was no matter. They had he was a hard man now, and he if he could survive this trial, he could survive anything. The world is no match for him. Mind over matter. If you would like to read about research facilities, go right ahead. Like I said earlier, this societal proven stuff happens all the time, so We'll get back to schools. Eventually, we lose some political power, but we get more research speed, which isn't bad, especially since we... Oh, we're still kind of lacking in a lot of research speed, so... ISD Field Commissars. The old Soviet Commissars were one of the few good ideas that the Politburo ever spat out. It is a shame that they were fatally misguided by the folly of Bolshevism, rather than being guided by the twin virtues of patriotism and hate for Germans. And yet, perhaps, the core of the idea is not beyond salvation. The most dedicated ideologies of the Black Hand are itching to take to the field, as their predecessors in the NKVD often did. We should grant them this liberty with the formation of a commissar unit within the ISD. With bullets and a badge of office, they will serve as the backbone of our armed forces and forcing discipline without compromise. So get more organization, which is good. Recovery rate, which is 15%, which is not, not bad. That's pretty good. And division, defense on core territory. So if we're defending, especially against the people in eastern Siberia, or central or eastern Siberia, we should do relatively okay. And with one day left, we get some more war support, which is nice. Even though I don't know if we can get that much more. Yeah, it doesn't look like we can. That kind of sucks. Oh, well. A warm welcome. Vorobyov. Vorobyov. Smile at the recruits standing naked and shivering in the barracks. Ha. Huh. The cadres, older men, were arrayed, or arrayed in parallel rows facing one another, forming a corridor from one end of the hall to the other. Each man held in his hand something pl blunt and painful. Truncheons, sticks, leather belts, soaps and socks, among others. Vorobyov stepped up to the head of the line where the recruits were standing. Some put on a show of defiance, others cowered or covered themselves in shame. It's quite simple, kids, he said with a false cheer and a knowing smile. What you're going to do is run down between them one by one and try to reach the end without falling over or giving up. You do either and they'll beat seven shades of crap out of you. They will throw you to the boys next door. They're, they like them young, you know. <laughs> oh, man. The soldiers snickered. Malevolent intent was palpable in the frigid air. All right, go! Vor Vorobyov, Vorobyov shouted, slapping the nearest recruit on the shoulder with a hand missing some of its fingers. Run, crap bird. <laughs> as soon as the recruits entered the gauntlet, the bludgeons began to descend. The sound of the blows raining upon bare skin turned the others pale. Halfway down the line, he toppled to the floor with blood running from a split forehead, and the cadre descended. Like a pack of wolves, they surrounded his prone form and tore into him. The barrage of blows lasted mere seconds, but by its end, he was unmoving, alive but barely. Screw this, blurted another recruit, dashing for the barracks door. The cadre's eyes stood upon him as he ran. He wrenched the door open, heedless of the cold outside, and came face to face with a burly sergeant. Sergeant, thank God. He turned to the point at the cadre behind him with a trembling finger. Sir, they, they're going to kill us. Sir, please. Get back in there, you, you squadrol. <laughs> Grab the sergeant. He produced his own truncheon and smiled. Believe me, I'm worse. How else would they learn? Oh my goodness. Oh, man. Oh my goodness, that was... I shouldn't be laughing, but that's kind of funny. Hey, look, we have huh, we got 9.4% growth rate. Wow, that's actually pretty impressive. We were 5.7 because of the poverty thing, but wow, 9.4? Jeez. Now, here's the idea. We're going to go to war with these guys soon, right? So, what we're going to do is... I'm going to save my political power because once we take these guys out... It's going to take a while to, anyways. But once we take, do take them out, it's going to take some a lot of political power actually to core all that stuff. So, let's save our PP for now. Serbia sets with Italy. Good for them. Don't really care. Oh, we go to war. Cool. Yeah, there you go. We should do relatively okay. Uh, how are our planes like? Yep, we already have planes in the air, which is great. And you guys are fighters. There you go. Very nice. How are we doing down here? Uh, the range is not great, but actually... Oh, we are fighting them too. Okay, so they did come online. So they did want to come over here too, so. Uh, you guys are doing great. And then you guys are actually moving in, which is awesome, 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 awesome. How many divisions do they have? Uh, up to 25, so we have 30, which is pretty good. And they're all 20 combo with, so they're not too bad. Uh, jellico has been re-elected uh, Prime Minister of... of blah, 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 blah. I can't think right now. England. Yeah, that, that E-word. Ooh, that E-word. Maybe we should not cut the military budget anymore for this. There you go. Good luck trying. Honestly, they sent some divisions down to the south here, which I'm kind of okay with, seeing as we're doing relatively okay with these people. How many men have we lost? Probably 7,000. That's not great. We've killed out 15,000 from the Euro League, which is good. Uh, over here... Ooh, it's not looking great, though. You guys are actually doing relatively okay, though, so... Yeah, we're not going to stop that. The ISD field commissars, which is good. Expanding the Vorkuta Training Center. In the cold north, soldiers' water solidifies and hardens in an ice tougher than stone. 
so it is with men too. The former gulags in the Arctic Circle have proven their values as places where sniveling, wet-eyed recruits can be sent later to return as iron-hearted killers with ice in their veins. The town is coming to expand for Kuta. It needs more cells, stronger walls, and deeper grades. Everyone must remember that Russia, too, is a prison. It is a prison that we shall in time escape all to enact our just revenge. Alright, so for now, let's go and stop the attacks. Uh, actually, if you help out, you should actually be able to win pretty easily. We're actually doing relatively okay, though. Like, surprisingly relatively okay. Got anything else here? We definitely don't have a lot of, uh, huh, stability. Or war support, really, I should say. Uh, no, almost like no war support. Holy cow. Push these guys further in. Um, anything else here? Not really, no. Oh, there we go. That's good. Do that. We need the... Oh, man, we need that manpower, too. So, um, ooh, I definitely want to attack. Let's go here, maybe. Can we try that? Let them attack us a little bit as well, so. Yazov, any upgrades? <clears throat> and I do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. Uh, winter expert, I never use this, so let's try it. Why not? Ooh, over here. Oh, yeah, you should be able to win. There you go. Not really worried about that. We gotta spare our soldiers. This is not looking good now, is it? No, it is not. Alright, so here we go. We're gonna do this as well, because I want to keep smashing down south and encircle and, and destroy these guys, so that'd be very good. Because then you guys are gonna go right there. That's the case. We're going to save some manpower. There you go. Cut these guys out. Actually, if anything, I'm going to spend more on military budget for now. Help them out. They're very low organization. Do that. We can kill these guys off. <clears throat> Keep these guys in place. You guys actually help support the attack. Get rid of these guys first. Good. Hold. Send one down there. Are they attacking anywhere? Yes, they are, which is good. We've lost 21,000. We've killed off, like, almost 50,000 of them. So it's, that's pretty good, actually. Good. There you go. You don't need to move in as well. You don't need to move in either. Hold. I don't want to lose that spot. Fighting over the river sucks, 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 Oh, oh, we lost that. That sucks, too. It's worth it. Ah, ah, you know, help them. Help them out. There you go. Well, they're definitely attacking now. Ooh, are we losing here? That's not ideal. But you might be able to win there, though, if you do do attack. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. So you gotta be careful with that manpower, though. Alright. Tactical analysis. The fate of the Russia lies solely with us. Only we can be our salvation. There can be no half-measure missteps in the battles to come. A single mistake has spelled defeat for many an enemy. Though we won our struggle for West Siberia, it's no flawless victory. There were always errors, overextensions, unnecessary casualties. We must do better. Unnecessary casualties? Maybe. But sometimes we gotta root out the weak in our own country. Conducting a thorough analysis of the tactics used by our commanders as well as our enemies will bring us that much closer to perfection, and thereby the destruction of Germania. Oh crap, we lost that. That sucks. Immediately go in there. You want you want the river? Live at the Rakuta training camp, though. The Evgeny started settled to his feet when the truck beneath him jerked to a halt, wrestling him from the ones one place where he felt any respite to sleep. Selected for a supplemental training, he knew the drive down the pothole roads of Siberia would be his last opportunity for rest, joining the ranks of his weary comrades. He rubbed his eyes. As he opened them, he saw just mere feet away a stout but authoritative figure staring into his eyes with a scowl. Next thing he was on the ground, the jackboot of the same man now firmly lodged in his chest. Haze, Yevgeny's vision faltered until it faded to darkness. Get up, you son of a gun! This time, instead on his chest, the boot was kicking his side. Biting his up through the pain, Yevgeny slowly got to his back on his feet, letting his man continue to bark out every possible obscenity at him. Seconds later, he stood in the ranks as men marched into Borkuta, surrounded by barbed wire fencing. The days there were all complete heck. Beating continued incessantly with nothing but arduous work and drilling to break up what seemed like constant pain. Those two broods went out to the glorified morgue of a hospital and a few ever returned. In a few... in the second week. As his group was on a ten mile run, Yevgeny spotted a carrot in the dirt, knowing better than to run to get it. Yevgeny tried to ignore the orange beauty that his malnourished body yearned for. With only two small meals, he wanted nothing more than to devour it. As he neared it, he caved. Breaking formation and shoving his comrade out of the way, he fell on his ground clutching the carrot. In a flurry of shots, kicks, and strikes from a baton, Yevgeny finally got asleep. The camp at Rakuta came to be known as the Fang for its unrelenting training style and harsh management. Within a month of his first arrivals coming in, 25 had died of injuries sustained during training. Such is the price we pay to prepare for the Great Trial. Sit, lobby, and... Well, you want to leave? No, 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 there's no leaving here. <clears throat> no, 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 no. Get those guys in there. Good. Hey, we actually broke over the river twice. Nice. Alright, is there any divisions here? There are. I want to encircle these guys and kill them off. Ooh, the armor is attacking over the river. Not a bad idea for you guys. I love it. Help them out. 
Come on, good. Kill them. Beautiful. They're still attacking over the line, which is fine with me. Alright, 31,000 losses is definitely not good. Ooh, better cast though is always good though. Let's see, anything here? Maybe get some manpower? I'm tempted to get more manpower. But, once we win the war against like the Euro League and then Orenburg, then that should mean we should be able to uh, core that area, so that'll be nice, actually. And can we afford to change whatever we get cast? Yes, we can, actually. Nice. Uh, are there any other planes or air bases around here? That's maxed out up there. We don't really have that many air bases. Well, we got one up here, but, you know, it's not great. Interceptors, fighters. We got plenty of cast. I like that. Oh, there's a hole here. As much as I love holes, that's not a good thing. Alright, so we probably want to attack here, maybe. If possible, so. Oh, you're, you're by yourself, aren't you? Oh, could you actually win? You know what, force it. Because this way you can get another area to attack here, too. Uh, wait, because they did that, we actually might be able to take out the capital then. Yes, that IFB is leaving, which is good. If we can capitulate them without shedding too much more blood, that'd be a great thing. Auto saving? Okay, I thought I, thought I heard something going to be popping up, but whatever. Come on, grab it. And? Oh, come on. Doesn't matter, let them die. We got it. Force the attack here, force the attack. There we go, we got him. Kill them off. There we go. So, let's redo the front line here. I need you to extend this just a little bit more. Oh, some of the comments though from the last video. Let's see. Build the bunkers. So, yes. We need to build the bunkers, which we will eventually. Oh, good. This is why exactly I saved my political power. Exactly for this stuff. Because we need to <laughs> look at that manpower. <laughs> Uh, cold days. Uh, wait, what is this? Uh, by going the, by the recent actions, it seems that all hopes of peace with the WRF has been dashed. An announcement from 60th Kyar, the Rus West Russian states, claimed that we are an illegitimate state that stands in the way on the path to reunify all of Russia. Following this declaration of hostility, they expelled all of our resistance within their borders. As the military starts to mobilize and clouds circle the horizon, it seems that our conflict of interest shall be set on the battlefield rather than the negotiating table. I don't care. Because now, we've got the mountains over here. Ceasefire proposed. Uh, arrival, our rival sent a diplomatic community key. Proposing a ceasefire and an end to the war with the fate of the Southern Urals. The nations that once ruled the region have been conquered and absorbed during the fighting, and the war continues as the casualties continue to rise. Neither side has been able to gain the upper hand. The proposed ceasefire would ha hostilities indefinitely and divide the Southern Urals evenly between East and West. A ceasefire will give both of our states a chance to recover and lick our wounds. For both states, we will offer a chance to in integrate their new territories and prepare for a resumption of hostilities, but calling out the fighting now may cost either side the initiative later. We must decide if we accept these terms or continue fighting until total uh, victory or defeat. Nope! You wanted this, son. You t you chose to get in this war uh, to help defend those weaker neighbors. So, mm -hmm. but happy 1969, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. This is one of the campaigns where I've really not focused on my infantry that much, have I? Oof, not bueno. So let's get our guys reformed a little bit more. They've lost 91,000. They have definitely lost divisions in us, which is great. The finest armor, Omsk Transmash, has come far since it began receiving commissions. From the Black League. Raw materials flow like a river into its gates. Amidst the smoke and flame of its foundries, redemptionary laborers hammer sheets of steel and its machines fit for the war's grueling work. As productive as they are, however, they need to be worked even harder. The arch enemy wields technology far in advance of our own, and both the workers and engineers will need to increase their efforts to match it. Every sheet of metal, every shell, every engine all must be in perfect working order, brought to the cutting edge of military advancement. Their tank corps might better grind German bones into the blood soaked soil of their accursed homeland. And time for a sup of coffee. Oh crap. No we're out of manpower. Well, that's not good. Let's give our guys some time, get some more planning done. That'll be okay. And overwhelming firepower will help us win. Where's the next airbase? I probably want to actually prioritize that. It's over here. I think it's over there. Oh, over here. Well, the northern parts we can't really do too much with, so. That's okay for now. Get some planning done. Oh, wait, do we actually make another division? Oh. Uh, you guys actually will probably do okay right here, so. Yeah, you definitely would. Ah, oh, second so inauguration of Bennett. Good job, Bennett. Actually, you guys might be able to do really, really well, but we have no manpower, so we got to consider whatever we, we've got right now. All right, just kill these guys off. Well, what's their template like? Oh, uh, looks like about 20 combo width. They're really stacked up, so not too bad for them. Uh, that's the case. I want you guys to go here and then go right there, right there. I want to circle that division and kill it. 
Good. Nope, you're not leaving. There you go. Are we out of weaponry at all? No, actually we've got 2,400 pieces of anti-tank. Or, or infantry equipment, I should really say. Not bad. I want you guys to do this. Let them come in, actually. And then we can, once they abandon their tile, I'll be kind of okay with that. We definitely need some armor, though. Oh, well, maybe not. The finest armor. Air superiority. The free aviators were fine pilots for acting up Admiral Admiral Tally German jets and plummeting to Earth. Of everything left behind by the incompetent Red Army Air Force, they only they proved their worth in the struggle against Germany. The aviator spirit of independence was incompatible with the tenets of the Black League, but their tactics, honed over nearly 20 years, are unquestionably effective. So, too, was the collection of aircraft they assembled, including some nearly modern designs donated by generous third parties. We will carry on their martial legacy, sans the undesirable Bolshevik elements. Very good. That sucks. At this point, you guys just might have enough gumption to just go ahead. Yeah, the southern part can definitely just go ahead. Look at that. Even the IFVs. Uh, let's see. Are they... They're probably getting pierced. I mean, 35% is not that great. So let you guys just go on ahead, have a good time. And prepare for war. Um, no, I'm kind of okay. We don't have to click on that if we don't have to, so... These guys are looking really weak. What's going on with Zukov? Like, where, where's this... These IFVs... I don't see any tanks, though. He's Mr. Tank Daddy, isn't he? Educating the people... Well, he's got plenty of manpower. We got way more factories, though. About 30 more. Yeah, he has no tanks! How can Zukov not have any tanks? That is a big sadness. That's a huge, hugely missed opportunity. Stockpile? Hold on, what has he got in stockpile? He's got anti-tank. A little bit of artillery. He's got quite a few guns, so... His soldiers just suck. He already said this once. Excuse me. Why would he give you peace? No. We're winning, for the most part. It's not so much that we're winning. It's so much that the enemies are losing. My goal is just to not lose. I don't have to win. Just make sure I don't lose. Experiment experimental designs. Tucked away in the ivory towers, the immortal plutocrats of Zlotaus contributed nothing to our efforts. They chose to profit from the unpatriotic avarice of our self-proclaimed rival states when their usefulness expired. We buried the scum in a shallow grave and took back what was rightfully belonged to Russia. Among the riches we acclaimed was the Zlotaus arms plan, the center of the arms production that outstrips even the legendary Ishensk arsenal. Additionally, we acquired many blueprints for new and improved small arms from the workshops along with those gunsmiths and engineers who saw the light in time to spare themselves. Born in immoral capitalism, the arms of Zotaus will find redemption steeped in German blood. And I want to get Perm too. Perm would be a great addition to our country right now. Or re-addition, I should really say. Um, anything else here? Regional development is nice and all. Oh, look at this. The Ural War. Oh, we could have waited for to do this. That actually might have been okay. But I don't care at this point. Race for the Urals doesn't make me anything to me either. Yeah, at this point, we're doing really great down here. Uh, wait, I see an IFV. Let's encircle and destroy it. And you know what? You guys come here, too. You help them out here, too. Prepare for war? Eh, kind of okay with that. Cool! Oh! It does look like a tank, so... Goodbye, sir. Nice. How far are we in? Oh wow, we're we're almost at Musk the uh, Rex comes right at Muscovine. I wonder if we could really make this encirclement. Ah, the mechanical plant captured. After conquering the city is Izvensk. We've secured control over the Izvensk mechanical plant of the single greatest center of arms production in West Russia. Izvensk has long been used to pump out enormous quantities of pistols, rifles, and other small arms. And after the collapse of the WRRF uh, is Emsk and fact became property of Vladimir Romanov, the purported successor to Russia's late Tsar, who used it to build up his reaction and forces in a play for regional domination. Now that the planet is solidly ours, we can use it for the same purpose. And the Great Patriotic War in West Russian Warp is one of the primary producers of weapons for a huge number of soldiers. We can ensure that. <clears throat> Excuse me. We can ensure that our armies are armed with new modern firearms while our opponents struggle to assemble outdated arsenals. Drown them in a wave of lead? Yes, please. Ah, uh, military construction, great. Uh, we're going to go with this one, even though someone did recommend that we go, and uh, it was a comment, we spent some time doing some resource efficiency gain and extraction and such, so we'll definitely do that too. Go, go, go. Actually, if you really want to hold for now, that's fine with me. Boost up that budget, boys. We got to spend and get more political power. Oh, they don't like this. They really don't like that we're trying to encircle them. <laughs> oh. Oh, you're actually winning still, though. That is impressive. Our soldiers. Impressive. I know. 
And actually, we're on Professional Army. And we're getting closer and closer to Spartanic uh, Discipline, which is awesome. Love it. Help them out. Put them in their place. Oh, don't you dare lose. You're not allowed to lose. <sighs> Great. Yes. There we go. Beautiful. All right, at this point, this is looking real good for us. Spetsgruppa 5, or 5th. Every state must have its true born defenders. Every leader is on, is on a guard. The new rush will be no different save for the sheer strength of these chosen few, which will eclipse anything that our foes could ever hope to rally. The Glenclovrick's right-hand man, Evgeny Sevenstev, Sevenstev, has elucidated to him plans for our very own special operations corps, Spetsgruppa 5. Armed with the most sophisticated tools of death at our disposal and shaped into unwaveringly loyal killing machines, they will be our answer to the German SS. Each and every man of their number will be matched of the 20 hardened Teutons. Yes. Oh, that's not for some special forces, I would say. All right, let's keep boosting those numbers up. We need more population. We need more attack and defense. But mostly attack. Nice. How many did we kill? We cut off almost a quarter of a million of them. We've not suffered that many casualties compared to the enemy, which is great. All right, I wonder if we could do this, maybe. Yeah, we should be able to. That's nice. They're still trying to mount a pretty good defense against us, though. It's kind of unfortunate. Alright, so at this point, you all just hold. Stop the attack. Get on the line. Let's reconvene ourselves and encircle some pieces of garbage. There you go. Because four divisions, that's way too many that are just sitting there. Oh, they are trying to attack us too, huh? Immediately enter. Kill them off. And we're out of manpower, too, so that doesn't help. Anything else here? Prepare for war? I don't want to prepare for war. War seems kind of unneeded right now. Ah, better weapons. Good. Let's give even better weapons. More soft attack. Oh, are we out of guns? Yeah, we're out of guns. That sucks. Abolishes the Iberian Council, huh? Well, looks like they're moving around. Time to engage them in the north this time. Beat them senseless. Oh, you got in circle. That sucks. That really sucks, actually. Um, if you could try that, and then you guys move up here. I'm going to request that you guys go actually over here and help out as well. Spets a group of fifth. Better bolster auxiliaries. More recruitable population factors is something we could use immediately, so. Bolster the auxiliaries. The redemptionary brigades are men of limited worth, but their utility on the battlefield is undeniable. There's much a commander can admire about soldiers who have no choice but to fight or die. Such individuals are capable of great deeds in pursuit of their own survival. They'll never be heroes, but they can achieve similar results on occasion. Using them as a mere meat shield is inefficient. We will get far more use out of the brigades with some minor investments. Ensuring that all of them are uniformly armed, equipped, and trained will help form a sense of unit identity, both bolstering morale and keeping them in their rightful place. We might also offer some promises of the redemption actually being worthwhile, provided any of them see to live it. Best group of five. They had told him that they had said the best. When Evgeny Savinstev looked over the man, he would become the most elite unit in the whole of Omsk. He was not impressed. The group would need more than just stocky builds and determined looks. You will need toughness not only for your body, but of your mind. You will need devotion. You will never waver in your ter determination to avenge your country and protect your people. You need strength, the ability to lift yourself and others to your cause. Do any of you think you possess these things? Yes, comrade Karnal. Very well. Over the next three weeks, I will attempt to break you. I will succeed with many of you. You will quit, you will doubt, or you will perish. This does not matter to me, for the missions that I need you for are worth any losses, but I assure you, if you make it through every test of your endurance and skulls, you become the best soldiers in all of Russia and accomplish missions you never, never dreamed possible. We will begin with physical endurance and the easiest of the trials. You will see a full evergreen trunk before you. You must get that trunk around the course three times. The toughest seal forged in the hottest flame. Oh, crap. That's actually not good. We actually might lose a division here, then. You know what? We're going to go. We're going to go nuts with this guy, then. You're going to go straight up north if you can. And we're going to meet up in the north. You're going to... This division? This is going to be one heck of a rescue attempt. Or just go right there. Ah, that's good. We like big and bold and brash, right? Oh, no. You're going to stop him. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, we're still winning. Oh! Actually, in a turn of events, we actually encircled them and going to kill them off. Uh, actually, don't, don't worry about that. Good. Kill them off. Kill every single one of those guys off. No, oh, no, 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 no. You're going right in here, and you're going to touch... Well, don't touch them like that, but, you know, whatever. There you go. Get back to the line. All right, so up north, we're doing... Oh, Sictive Car is the capital. Screw that. Let's go to Sictive Car. Uh, for you, that's not bad. I want you to get down here, though, so we can circle all these guys in the center. No, I'm not going to give you a ceasefire. Are you kidding me? You know how many people, your people we killed? This is merely the beginning. 
Wow, we're really lacking on a lot of guns. Do we get 60 KR? Not yet. That's fine. Ah, oh, good. The other side of Superior is falling apart, too. I like it. You guys do well here, maybe? We're really running out of guns. Holy crap. Alright, so that's the case. Where are the guns at? We need 4,000 gunnerinos. Hey, we got Viatko. That's not bad. Ah, the Arsenal capture. We've secured the Arsenal in Sixtieth Guard, a major stockpile of military weaponry that could be proved decisive in securing victory in the West Russia. Previously in the hands of the West Russian Revolutionary Front, it came to our position at the fledgling Komi Republic when the WRRF led Sixtieth Guard. Komi used the Arsenal to maintain order inside its notoriously unstable capital and establish itself as a regional power, but even without, even with full access to it, was unable to prevent its loss. It also contains firearms, explosive tanks, and chemical weaponry, a fearsome collection for any would-be conqueror. Having taken it, we are a heavy advantage, proudly wielding the weapons that will bring us victory in West Russia. The perpetual resource shortage of the post-Soviet order. Every gun counts. Our control over the arsenal will afford us all the equipment we need to impose our authority over the region. Great. Great, great, great. Actually, I need you guys to go right there right now. There's not that many divisions that are in here, but every single division we kill will help us out. Both of the auxiliaries, which is great, and then more army professionalism with a professional corps. The Redemption Brigades can, alone cannot carry us to victory over the Hun. The Red Army's lack of professionalism was found its death knell when the invasion came. A poorly trained and unmotivated militia force is no match for men trained in war's bloody arts. The core of our army, therefore, must be the professional rank and file. Trained for the toughest situations and armed for maximum dispensation of death, they will be the bearers of victory. Only the unwavering will and superhuman super human might of those given wholly to the craft of death can overcome Germany. Good. Now, it's only like three divisions in here, but that's better than nothing. Kill them off immediately. We have no time to spare for the likes of inferior Russians. Huh. Good. Kill every single one of them off. What else can we do here? I'm thinking about getting, at least for now, slightly more manpower. It's not much. We could try that, maybe. I don't want to spend that much political power, too, so. Surrounded, and they are going to die. Actually, it's four divisions. Nice. That's, that's better than I thought we would get. Oh, you got actually encircled all the way over there, huh? Uh, don't tell me we've got to go all the way to Ark Angles to get all this stuff. Oh, we might not be able to. We, not, we might not need to, actually. Alright, so the north is... Has done so great that almost actually in Archangelsk. Just go straight there. And once that's done, you should be able to do whatever we need to do. Vyadka, don't lose it, please. Alright. Force the attack. I don't care what the losses are like. Ah, better weaponry. Nice. How about even better weaponry? Still building civilian factories, not bad. Uh, does anyone have upgrades, actually? Because of all this fighting, I mean, it's pretty gosh darn intense. US, Japanese, toxic. Oh, please don't nuke each other. Oh, we got Archangels. That should be enough. That should be more than enough at this point, then. Right? Archangels was a secondary capital, right? 98... 99% of the way there. Oh, come on. Oh, we're so close. They've lost 400,000 soldiers. Oh, look at how many soldiers they killed off. Half a million Russians died in this stupid war. Uh, if you... Uh, Krasnoya Sormorvo factory captured. We've acquired the Gorky tank factory, the largest producer of armored vehicles in West Russia. This factory is a vital part of Soviet industrial production and saw heavy usage during the West Russian War. In the aftermath of the WRRF's collapse, it fell into the hands of Nikolai Avarin and his divisions of bandits who used the factory to pump out tanks for the raid on Rex Commissary at Muscovy. An ignoble fate for such an important piece of military infrastructure. Tanks are also rare among the warlords of Russia, making anyone who can produce them a force to be reckoned with and making the factory a highly sought after prize. Now that it belongs to us, we can utilize Gorky's tank factory for a higher purpose and stealing scraps from the Germans. Regaining the capacity to produce tanks will be another step forward towards achieving full military capabilities of a fully-fledged nation, and another step towards declaring final victory in Russia. The power of modern warfare unleashed. Great. Marching for vengeance. The stage is set, the rifles cocked, the blades sharp, and let the world know that the Black League is on the march, and death himself leads our vanguard. We will crush every self-aggrandizing traitor to Russia, erase their feeble statelets, and bring glorious salvation to every corner of the motherland. When every German is little more than bones moldering in the grave, when Germania is dust and ashes on the wind, when the very meaning of German is forgotten to time, only then we will have victory. There can be no mistake in our intent. We're going to destroy Germany, reduce its mobile edifices to rubble, and utterly exterminate the Germanic race. Oh, man. Down to the last mewling spawn. That is the only way to ensure Russia's survival and the eternal freedom of our people. Ah, freedom through death. Actually, how's the budget looking? See, not too bad then. All right, and we got to lose a lot of stability now. Oh, look at this. Oh, we're at peace. Actually, I'm going to go and do this just because this is pretty good for getting, like, factories and stuff if we need them. 
Uh, Recon Company is not bad. I don't mind maybe a few more factories. I like the infrastructure, though. Uh, we get st more political power that way. That's worth it. More manpower is worth it. And uh, factories cost more. We can use more factories, honestly, though. So, All right. So which one of these do we want? Archangels, maybe. And we're going to do one more for now. Samara. Onega. Eh, Orenburg. Eh, I'm not sure what the, what's, what's the popular space is here. Maybe Vyatka. Let's, let's do Vyatka. There we go. Well, no. Ooh. We don't need to see that. Russian reunification. We could do this, but it might ruin the focus tree that we currently have. So I want to wait until we finish our this part of the focus tree and then do Russian reunification because it, it gives us stability and political and naval XP, but <clears throat> not much else. Showing off. Comrades, boom the drill sergeant's voice. Glakovar Gyalzov is here. Men left up from their exercises and dropped everything within three seconds. Every man, single man in the training hall was standing at attention. I should head. Attention. As 100 heads turned to the doorway and arms snapped up in salutes, then came the Glukovark, gl gl as though he were a civilian wandering into the shop on a lazy Sunday. As you were, comrade, said Yazov, his face an unreadable half-smile, within a heartbeat. <clears throat> Every man had to resume his previous activities, unquestioning their leader's sudden laxity. Yazov began to stroll through the hall at a leisurely pace, looking left to right with a drill sergeant and two armed guards at his back. He paused before a group of men engaged in rapid relentless push-ups. How long have these been, men been going, Sergeant? He asked, his tone neutral. My apologies, sir, I have no idea. Corporal Rykov is leading them, though. Corporal Rykov, at attention! Called Yazov, a giant of a man leapt to his feet and snapped, too. Sit on face and straight backed. How many push-ups have you fellows performed today, Corporal? Despite towering over Yazov, the man swallowed. I'm not certain, sir. We measure ourselves in time rather than individual actions. Currently, we stand at 13 minutes straight. Holy crap. Yazov tapped his chin. Explain your reasoning for this, Corporal. Sir, because endurance is best measured in years, not footsteps, sir. Yazov not contempt. Very good, Corporal. You know our ethos well. Carry on. Do not count days. Do not count miles. Holy crap, 13 minutes? I mean, I can do, like, quite a few push-ups, but Jesus Christ, that's a, that's a... Hmm, wow. Oh, actually, probably next up is Kazakhstan. Which will be fun. Can't wait to take out them Kazakh boys. And how many guys are we missing? None! I love it. Oh, and there goes Yemen. Ah, uh, is America going to get involved in Yemeni pursuits and ideas? Maybe. Oh, what can we do here, actually? Prepare for war. Uh, reunification. That's a, well, there's so much oil down here. I love it. Alright, let's grab some... Actually, as someone did say, resource extraction, finally. It only took us until June 1969. Nice. And we got to do this, too. Uh, are we getting any political power, actually? Mm-hmm. Point two seven. Not great. Not bad. Just not great. And then we'll be doing our image abroad. Now that we've united West Siberia, it's about a town we cultivate an appropriate image for ourselves. We need to appear as a legitimate unifier if we want any support from other powers. Our containers cannot be allowed to gain the support and backing we direly need. An appearance of the strength and determination will get the attention of America and Japan, which will allow us to receive full aid to build up for the reunification of Russia and the Great Trial. Making sure other powers know that we're the only group capable of defending Russia from the evils of National Socialism will surely let us stand apart from other rival governments who don't have the dedication. With the assistance from foreign powers, our rivals will be diminished, and we will stand above all of our enemies. At least we're still mobilizing a little bit. That's kind of nice. <clears throat> a hateful heart. Who are we brothers? Roll the man at the column's head. We are the Black League. We are Russia, they replied. What is our purpose? To kill the <clears throat> German. How far will we go? Even to our dying breath came the roar. Loudest of all was Pavel, his voice bearing a harsh edge born of hate. Hate was what fueled him, and it gave him purpose. It had become him, transformed into a raging inferno when the foul German bandits of Orsk took his village and burned it to ash. For years he had wandered, living off the land sustained by the motherland's gifts. The day the Black League had found him, scrounging for food amongst the dead, was the day that made him who he was today. The League had taken him in, honed the uncontrollable fire in his soul into a searing blade of vengeance. Someday, when the League took the fight to Germany, he would be unleashed. When a German boy had suffered as he had, seen his mother defiled, his siblings butchered like swine, his home reduced to cinders, only then would justice be done. Kill, kill, and only kill. And kill, and kill again. Oh no, we got rid of that other... No, no, it's still here. Nice. I like that. Infrastructure. Beautiful. And by infrastructure, I mean infrastructure for literally all the places, because we have... There's so many resources here. Look at this. It's so beautiful. Well, in some places. Curfew. Oh boy, the damp and drizzly night hung over low over Akangos. Now the city sites lights reflected out the low clouds that bathed the old the world in a stale salmon orange glow of undarkness. The world was silent save the south sounds of distant police sirens and the occasional passing BTR. <clears throat> when Marat saw the man crouched at the bases of the West Russian War Memorial, 
in the center of the city, 20 minutes after the end of the curfew. He had assumed the worst, a possible saboteur or maybe someone planning a bomb. He'd seen many of those in the days since the fall of Arcangels. But he stepped off the, out of the staff guard into the damp, drizzly night. His pistol was at the ready, his concern faded away. The man at the base of the memorial was quiet, clearly quite elderly. Marat stepped slow, and it was only a regular speaking voice that he addressed the man. Sir, you should really get, get going along. It's 20 minutes past curfew. The man turned around, slowly revealing a jagged, ragged jacket adorned with Soviet decorations as a crumpled St. George ribbon. A look of subtle disdain crossed the old man's time with her face as he regarded the young man. Marat instantly knew what he was thinking. It was the same with almost everyone he met in Arkangos. Were these men in black any different from the ones who had come before? Marat broke the silence with an outstretched hand and gestured back to the staff car. Comrade soldier, come on, I'll take you home. Oh boy. And so we got that done, which is nice. And actually, I did say I want to make, I want to make tanks, but it doesn't look like we have any tank templates, which really sucks. Um, so maybe we'll use, you, you, actually, you know, it might be easier to just use, uh, infantry, because that's 25 army XP anyways. Um, hmm, because they already have all the support companies here too, so let's go and go back and duplicate this and call these tanks, because we have almost 200 army XP, so save, raise it up, thank you, tanks. Main battle tanks, I don't know how many we actually have, so screw it, we're just going to make them 40 combo with already. Mobile battalions, we want APCs, because I love APCs. Uh, these guys don't have a bunch of organiz they won't have a bunch of organization, which is totally fine, but whatever. 30 combat width, and I throw on some more armored battalions, that's fine. And there you go, a 40 combat with tank division, 8 uh, speed, uh, we actually have enough APCs. We actually have enough tanks, that too, nice. Oh wait, division designer. High priority. There we go. Not bad. U.S.-Japanese treaty signed. Okay. Winds change in the Pacific. Good for them. Maybe as long as they focus on not killing us, we'll be kind of okay with us. Uh, oh, we actually have... Look at that. The deficit's looking great. Now it's not looking great. <laughs> oh, the Iberian Wars. Oh. Well, good for them. Wow, that looks like a giant mess. Holy cow. Operation Tenda. Some peacekeeping. Oh, wow. Well, that's alright with us. Hmm. Ah, political power. Operation Potem Kim. On the world stage, your nations appear to be mysterious and inaccessible. If we want support, we, if we want support, this will need to change. Comrade Yazov has ordered an extensive campaign to show the world he is a developmental authoritarian, attempting to bring improvement and modernity to his country. To make sure we receive as much support as possible, we'll invite multiple foreign dignitaries and press for the first time to control or visit territories under our control. To the foreigners, it is in the League's best interest to present ourselves as a society traumatized by war and economic disparity. We can send a message that we are struggling to de de demilitarize and beat our swords into plowshares. The press will be shown only what we want them to see. Soon we will have the aid we sent and we want. Not meant for demilitarization, but something much more effective at destroying our enemies. Foreign Ministry Awakens. West Siberian Provisional Authority of Foreign Ministry Internal Memo Number 0001. Very good. Ooh, got that. Ah. Very good. If you have received this memo, it means that you've been shortlisted to serve your mother country in the new foreign ministry. Officers are being prepared in Western Omsk, and you'll be notified when you're, you are required. Starting immediately, you are required to begin your planning around the key diplomatic issues facing the League, and will be ready to present solutions. Issue number one, foreign relations and legitimacy for authority. Goodwill is, meaning, is meaningless fiction, but if we allow the Americans and Japanese to believe that us to be a hostile and threatening regime, then we'll soon find ourselves rivals to be meeting us on the field with foreign guns in hand and volunteers at their backs. Additionally, any embargoes must be strangled in the cradle, especially on the goods that need to be prepared for the great trial. Number two, as a great mall, the Black League opens up to an unsuspecting world, Na naive humanitarians will flood into our territory to help. We need to ensure that they are monitored and that they find nothing that they should not, and that every scrap of value is extracted from their visit. Number three, the German menace casts a long shadow over Russia, and we need to cow them into inaction until we are truly prepared for the trial. Number four, many of the illegitimate warlords have grown too paranoid towards us to make infiltration a straightforward for task. We need to choose new and vulnerable victims that we can begin spying on. The world will know of us only what we want them to know. Good. More political power. That just means more integration. And we can do this area too, hopefully as well. And we're losing stability, but you know, what else is new? Wow, we're getting no political power now. Other comments, yeah, like I said earlier, get resource extraction, which is good. We need to play Democratic Italy, which I I will, I very, very, very extremely high on the list. I'll put like that, I'll say that at the time of this recording, it's very extremely high on the list. Democratic Italy. And then, England when? 
England's getting as higher and higher on the list. I kind of have them scheduled already in my mind. So, we'll get there. I promise. I promise we will get there. And actually, I don't mind actually getting more forts or... Let's get that one too. Nice. Come on. Can we just get the next one, please? Ah, we got it. Nice. Very good. We need as much of this as we can possibly get. Prepare for war. And then Operation Pumpkin. Uh, appeal for recognition. USA. Mission to Berlin. Directorate. Well, let's do appeal for recognition. We need to appeal to the foreign powers to recognize us as a legitimate nation and the best cont contender to unify Russia. Newly formed re National Reclamation Authority will deal with the foreign nations and make sure that our appearance is up to par with what they're looking for. They must not be allowed to go to back some other illegitimate government that is not our own. Of course, the largest thing stopping us from receiving support is our appearance to seemingly too radical. The League will be shown to appear as not as ruthless dictators, but unfortunate authoritarians who care about their nation and their people. The League is simply just justly fighting for the dangers of National Socialism. Against the dangers of National Socialism. We're not, we're not fighting for it, we're fighting against it. It won't be as hard to hide among some of our more... It won't be hard to hide some of the more unappealing qualities from foreigners, which is totally okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be like 1930s Germany before they started war... You know, oh, look at that. Wow, despotism. Yazov. Operation Pump, Pot and Kin Briefing. But before we do that, let's go and do all this stuff. Ooh, and actually, we're still down here, too. I want to do this so badly. I want to get better stuff, but we've got to integrate places. We just have to. Wow, that took up everything already. Ah, a briefing. And actually, let's take a look at this. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Anything here? Prepare for war. Research is looking nice. As all of you are aware of the many failures of the first trial, we must learn from these and adapt to our new circumstances. One of these failures was poor relations between Russia and the Western powers. When alliances against uh, Germans needed to be formed, they backed away. When aid needed to be sent, they did not send enough. When the time came for all nations to stand strong against the madmen, the world failed. Justice will come to those who abandon Russia in our hour of greatest need. That is not why I've called you here today. I'm here to announce Operation Putin Kim. This operation, conducted by our propaganda departments as well as our director of foreign activities, will ensure that those who do not understand the measures we must take are either not aware of them or are convinced of their necessity. This means giving a new face to the Black League, uh, one of strength, yes, due to deter aggression, but also one of peace, one of security. We must focus on the people and how safe and fulfilled they are being part of a great nation. We must pretend to be hedonistic and narcissistic as those in the West. We must also reassure our potential enemies that our goals do not stretch beyond the borders of Russia. The Japanese would certainly be nervous about a resurgent Russia. They must be calm. The Germans would naturally be furious about the rise of a strong power once again in the East. They must be deceived and distracted. Gentlemen, we must act quickly as reunification continues. Details and assignments can be found on page 5. Budgetary matters on page 13. Good hunting. Lambs to the slaughter. More stability for the nation. I love it. Death of President Ho Chi Minh. I don't understand. Like, actually, I do understand. But it always surprises me how much time has passed when we're playing, like, especially mods I love, especially like TNO. How are we almost 48 minutes into this video? Like, I'll be honest. Like, I've not kept track of time until I looked at my stopwatch. I love TNO too much to, like, really not understand how fast this is going by. <laughs> oh, man. I'm enjoying this quite a bit, so. And I hope you are as well. Because at this point, if you're still watching this episode... Thank you very much. I appreciate you. A message to Berlin. It is time we finally send a message to the great enemy. The Glock Klobark has prepared a message directly to the fear of Germany, denouncing the great evils of National Socialism. In the message, Yezov has also vowed Germany will never be allowed to harm Russia again. Once Russia is united under the leadership of the Black League, Germany shall finally face the consequences of its past. The foul and vicious Third Reich grows ever closer to its inevitable demise, and while we're losing almost a political power a day, holy cow, that is a lot. But it's all for the good of the nation. And, oh, I, for some, I think the other folks to our east are still fighting. Ah, oh, good. Kill each other off. Kill each other as much as you possibly can. Mikhail the one. Ah, the Emperor of Japan recognizes us. The Japanese are the great vulture of Asia. Their imperial addiction drives a great hunger in their bellies, a craving for resources that can be easily taken from the backwards people of lesser nations. It was a hardly difficult deception to make the Japanese think we were one such opportunity. We needed to, do to make no promises, only implying that we'd happily to integrate their economic sphere once united in exchange for international recognition, which will think took them far enough to think that we might actually go through with an insulting plan. This was enough to get their interest and and an accidental detour of the delegation uh, into an industrial stockpile of resources we truck in from all of our territory had them so enchanted they gave us everything we wanted. With Japan officially recognizing us, we can trust what they, along with their wretched East Asian pu puppets, will stay neutral in our unification struggles, success, and U.S. recognition. Well, there was some worry about the overselling the performance to the American diplomats, but our theatrics did the job. 
What a nice people, said one diplomat before being loaded back into his jet. Hope they turn things around and rebuild. As Americans leave, the, the plastered smiles in the city center all fall back into the resol resolute scowls that have made permanent homes upon the faces of our citizens. We came off just as planned with a simple poor country trying hard to make a good impression. In the eyes of America, and therefore the OFN, we're just what we want to be. Forgettable. We receive a call from the foreign office a week after they return to their dis decadent homeland. Our course has been accepted. We'll take it as a sign that the Americans will stay neutral. Ah, oh, decadence of the West. Aren't they decadent? Alright, so we have... Oh, we still don't have enough. Oh, we need Orenburg still. Ah, why? Why do you pay me so? I think I got 460 manpower. Never mind. We need way more anti-tank and APCs, though. Alright, anti-tank, you gotta go way up. APCs? Planes are not looking too bad. This is a weird world where America recognizes the arms government. Yay! It seems like a nice place to visit. Oh, I don't know if I go that far saying it's a nice place to visit. As well as Japan. And this is great. This is really great. Everyone loves Omsk. Who doesn't? You'd be a fool not to love us. Ah, Egypt time. Uh, order collapses as it should. And we're doing better on the budget now. I'm really enjoying this playthrough. You know, almost pretty much every campaign in TNO I enjoy. Not every single one of them, but a lot of them I really do. Most of them I do. Start the Illegals program, aid for reconstruction. Oh, let's do this one. Now that we are better on terms with Japan and the U.S., the National Reclamation Authority has started asking nations for materials and supplies. Ostensibly, this will be used for the reconstruction and rebuilding of our nation. Most of it will, in reality, be used for military build-up. Russia cannot be unified with the consumer goods and civilian technologies. Only through the sword and through the shield may we achieve a vengeance on Germany and her collaborators. Any other contender for unification will surely no mer show no mercy. We will act in kind. I will be the sword and shield of Russia, by which justice will be done for the fallen, from the oath of the Black League. Good. Oh, we're actually losing political power now. Wow. That's a lot of losses. Hey, we must have course some stuff. Look at that. We got some manpower. Finally. 69. Nice. So we're all super close to getting this stuff done. And down here, we're super close to getting that one done, too. Maybe we should get some better artillery. Maybe we should get some better engineers. Maybe we should get some... I mean, there's so much we have to get done. <laughs> there's so much. Ah, uh, the West Siberian Provisional Authority. Oh, that was still us. Yeah, it's still us. Because I want to finish this focus tree first. You know what? I'm kind of okay with building some infrastructure here, too. Just keep... We want, I want to keep at least... Three things of factories going, civilian factories going at all times for our nation, because we need it. Especially to help out the budget. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, my friends. I'm, like I've said, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I love this campaign. Well, let's start the legal program. Under the direction of Yuri Drozda, the Black League will begin a program in which to infiltrate Germany. We need to know their every weakness to bring down the Nazi behemoth. There is also the possibility of creating weaknesses for ourselves to exploit in the future. Areas easily accessible to a sabotage can be utilized when the time comes. Now is the perfect moment. This send informants and sleeper agents across the Unity Pact. The preparation to sabotage operations now will give us more options in the future. A head start on gathering intelligence will also prove useful once we have unified Russia. In which they all lose stability, which is, I think, a great thing. Alright, let's keep doing this stuff. Better trucks? Might as well. We must prepare for the Great Trial. We have to, have to. Everything we do, as we've established, is for the Great Trial. And we'll probably read about the Directorate of Foreign Activities, Lycurgus of Russia. Huh. Alright, let's do this. Keep building. We need more political power. Cut, 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 cut. Ooh, that's not look good. Oh, we must have got those five factories done. The five uh, military factories. Which is kind of okay with me. You know what? Keep building up infrastructure here, too. Just because we can build factories even faster, 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 faster. Like as they say in, what was it, Primal France, Red Flood? Uh, to describe Yazov is not to describe a traditional political figure in a modern sense. His pol policies are unconventional, his ideological underpinnings vast and lacking the crude label of left or right. And if he represents anything at all, he represents order and nation, stability and strength in terms that can easily be understood by the average man and woman of Russia, and of course, to be prepared against the future aggression from Germany, with a major focus on mass arrangement, or arrange mass armament. While this may seem like his end goal, it is in reality a way to maintain public support and to create a shared sense of unity among the Russian people. He is bringing a new order to Russia, as Solon did to Athens or Lycurgus of Sparta, or Sparta, a figure that cares for his people above all else and wishes to create a nation that will outlive him. 
The following was written by Samuel Huntington, a political scientist who had spent many months in our territory researching the ec economic and social system of our nation. His article, published in various outlets throughout America and the free world, has already made ways in as many nations are reconsidering their prior stances on us. This may prove useful, especially considering the necessity of additional resources and contacts in these nations. While this taste, well, it will prove useful in defeating both our enemies in Russia and the eventual conclusion of the Great Trial. Like Kyrgyz of Russia, I like the sound of that. The Red Cross in Omsk. As expected, now that we've opened up contact with the outside world, a request of, to offer humanitarian aid to our populace to begin to arrive in a foreign ministry. Preparations have already been sent and made for these useful idiots. A compound near Omsk has been set up for the Red Cross to share with a few Catholic organizations, and they'll be arriving soon. Guides have been co carefully chosen from the ranks of our special forces. They'll provide a smiling face for the foreigners and give us plenty of notice as to where the humanitarians are planning on heading next. A team of prudent specialists will be moving ahead of aid caravans, preparing the site and locals to survive against the international scrutiny. Any villagers with loose lips that are found to be in the path of the foreigners will be quickly relocated to work camps to avoid any regrettable leaks. Some of the league aren't certain of any of this worth is at risk. Oh, this is worth the risk. But it's hard to say with no free va vaccines and foreign planners setting up emergency preparedness protocols in the countryside, even if the pretentious notion that they're here to lift us out of poverty is an insulting one. We'll watch them carefully. And we will watch them very carefully. Well, integrating four places at once really hurts us. Uh, actually, the next one... Ooh. Euro fortifications? Why not? Because we can. Keep going, keep going. How are we looking? Oh, we still have a deficit, which is nice. I love it. Actually, the next one will be done in quite a while, so. Well, we can... Ooh, the Red Cross contribution. Yvonne sighed as American doctors left the village in the small caravan jeeps. They've been pleased to, pleasant to deal with, more pleasant than anyone had expected. The government warned them to be on their best behavior, and they had done so... Russia didn't have people like the Red Cross workers anymore, people with big hearts and bright smiles. It was infectious. The town found itself smiling despite themselves, singing songs and drinking vodka in the foreign camp at night. The children being inoculated against diseases, and Yvonne was glad that his own daughter might have a better chance of life thanks to their actions. No sooner than they disappeared over the horizon, did the Black League Special Forces team step out of the forest. Yvonne felt his heart drop. The pleasant dream the Americans had brought with them had left with their caravan. An acceptable performance, growled an officer in a commissar hat. What did they leave behind? For a single suicidal moment, Yvonne thought about lying, hiding the medical supplies, the water for purification equipment, the school books. With a reluctant sigh, Yvonne handed over the rough, scrawled inventory list he made. The officer scanned through it and nodded. We'll have a truck here in half an hour, have a few men on hand to help load it all up. We will put their aid to good use. Ah, and all that did was help us get out of our deficit of political power. Big sadness. That's alright, though. Things happen. And the Directorate of Foreign Activities. To come out on top of the coming conflicts, we need intelligence. Minister of Foreign Affairs Alexander Sakharovsky has come forward to organize a Directorate of Foreign Activities which will handle all foreign intelligence operations in Russia and elsewhere. Informants with all countries we hold interest in will give us many diplomatic and subversive opportunities. To infiltrate these nations, the guise of ambassadors for our friends and spies of our enemies will prove the most useful in gaining the most intelligence we do need. Well, look at that. Free military factories don't sign us up. We definitely need more APCs. Uh, what are we lacking the most? Main battle tanks, APCs. We have enough anti-tank for quite a while. I'm about making, about ready to make some um, 40 combo with divisions too. So uh, support command. Let's go to five here. That'd be probably pretty good. It looks like we're missing quite a few tanks. We'll do that and we'll do this as well. Uh, we're actually getting some political power finally. Thank goodness. Three, three, three. That's just good. Keep building up infrastructure, which is going quite nice, I would say. And not bad. Really not bad. I'm enjoying this, man. It's almost 1970, though. Hap almost Happy New Year, everyone. Almost Happy New Year. And we're still improving everything here. So, which is great, 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 great. 11. Holy bad words. 2 is not bad. Factory complex is 3.83. Fire rate, looking great. Agriculture, well, I mean, 50 to 80% of our population is still in poverty, but whatever. We don't really care. Oh, and we, we lost all that manpower. Holy crud. It's alright, though. And... Happy New Year, everyone. It's January 1st, 1970. Denounce the warlords. The Black League is only a rightful claimant to the national reunification. All other contenders are just weak and incapable warlords. The Black League is the only group that can achieve the destruction of Germany and the National Socialism. Only we can make Russia strong enough to compete, complete the Great Trial. The armies of the Black League are the strongest in Russia and will never bend to any opponent. And those other people condemn us, but we don't give a crud, do we? No, we don't. Because this is looking really bad. We need more manpower. <laughs> oh, no. The spider's web. Alexander slumped down in his chair and stared at the ceiling. It had been a busy day, talking to agents, organizing intel, reporting to Yaza personally. But progress had been made. He was pleased with how the Black League's tendrils were creeping into every adjacent warlord that they could, in could get into. Finally, he had a real intelligence organization. Not the scratch group of operas he used to deal with. Confiscating files of conquered warlords naturally supplemented their own work, and so the, directorate of the director of the foreign activities was ready for the next step. 
But who to the east, with their political chicanery and nearly unlimited potential, are meddling? Or further that, to the Soviet states who had forgotten their place in history. Perhaps west to the old Karmas or to the insane asylum. It was getting hard to tell these days. Either way, they had a lot of work to do tomorrow. The next step in the groundwork would have to be made in concert with the army. The ground must be laid for unification, and much of the burden would naturally fall on him. He didn't mind, because of, from this small office, with his uncomfortable chair and desk that was far too small for his needs, he could spawn every man, woman, and child from Finland to Arkutsk. He closed his eyes to rest for a few minutes. The power is a point, gun pointed in the right direction. Ah, more political power, great. We will do this, but we still need to do this one. And the, finally, we have finished trying to integrate every single stupid little statelet here. Actually, we're still trying to integrate how many? Just one more. Wow, we are not, we don't have a lot of manpower. Holy cow, as Please, they're not really trying to kill each other at all. They're out of manpower. They have only 50,000 left. They have up to 43 divisions. They got quite a few guns, too. It looks like, uh, yeah, 13,000. Let's look at the divisions. Uh, mostly infantry, yeah, 25 to 43. These guys are probably going to win, which is no severe. What do you expect? Uh, over here, cross the Urals? I mean, I guess. That's fine. It doesn't matter to us. I would love to keep doing this, but, oh, 10,000 manpower. This is going to hurt. And agents in Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is a region with many important resources that the league can use. Many deposits of iron, coal, and oil located in the steeps. These resources could be used for our war effort. Even more importantly, we don't want them to fall into the hands of our enemies. The Black League must secure Kazakhstan first. Since there will most likely be a conflict over the Kazakhs, it will be our best interest to send our agents to important locations to improve our chances in the region. These resources will be ours. I think that's war support too. Hey, we've got, our people can kind of read. That's a good thing. People can read. Cut it down, cut it down. Of course, we will get more uh, manpower once we do raise military spending, because we did slash it earlier, so that makes sense. I do want to do this, but since we're still down here, I want to do at least one more. Ooh, we do get more... We, ooh, actually, that... Mm, you know, I'm going to risk it. We still get more worse part. Dude, can we actually raise our stability by doing this? Because I know there's a there's a hard cap on ourselves right now. And, of course, integrating Orenburg and all those other states did hurt us, so we'll see. The foundation's laid. Our intelligence networks have been obtained, and our appearance on the world stage is now but all assured. We, all we have to do is sit and wait for the perfect moment. The warlords will be slaughtered, and Russia will once again stand united, ready to defeat our enemies. The great trial grows ever closer, and we will be ready. Enough time, we will reap what we have sown, and use our new advantages in the inevitable wars. Our enemies have no idea what is coming. Oh, God, that's so little manpower. Ugh. Of course, we're probably trying to make more divisions, too, but still. If that's the case, go and cut this down. We need a little bit more manpower. Uh, we really don't have a lot of divisions, do we? Wow, that is a lot. Why do we still have so much resistance here? Hold on. Okay, so maybe... Is this a core of... of well, so once we get that done, resistance will go away. That'll be really good for us. That's painful to look at, man. So long to make all these other stuff. Well, Supply-wise, we're doing not too bad. I mean, even we got a surplus of fighters and close air support. That's pretty good. IFBs, ooh, keep. I don't care what the cost is. Just keep boosting it. Oh, hello. That's that's some serious lag. Three. Oh, look at this. This is looking really nice. No, so this these two more on, because then these guys will be done and we can keep pushing this up too. Yeah, supply-wise, not not really important as much as getting more manpower. That is the most important thing we can do. So it was recommended that we don't ignite nuclear war. So what we'll probably do for the end of this campaign in the next episode is probably do both. One where I won't maybe do it, and one where I might do it. Foundation's laid. Great. Now I want to see the event first, or the decision. The foundation's laid. Foreign Ministry Status Report number 00017. The first round of our diplomatic efforts have come to their natural conclusion and ready for review. The diplomatic facilities have all been completed and renovated for use. We now have city centers that appear civilized to outsiders, hotels for diplomats, offices for our diplomatic corps, and meeting chambers that can host negotiations. While the ministry has additional ideas on how to entice and ensnare foreign support, we now have all we need to lure the outside world into complacency. Diplomatic outreaches. Regardless of how successful they were, I've breached through the static and established contact with the outside world. At the very least, military planners are confident that outsiders will contact us with words now rather than bombs. The Iraqis receive a statement of our intent, and the paranoia has already begun to work in favor of our plans. The militaries have spent decades searching for an enemy, and now that they've found uh, one in us, they've begun to overplay their hand, spreading discord through their blood-soaked empire, aided, aided by the infiltrators we've sent to, into their borders. Finally, on a local scale, we've ramped up our intelligence operations, and now have sympathetic ears ready and willing to aid our armies on the field in the unification wars to come. Real politic at its best. Anything else here before we do this? Maybe not. Actually, since we do have 25 political power, I wonder if we could spend on anything else, but... 
don't know. It seems like, give it one more day maybe. There's really nothing down here we can do. We barely, oh, we get 1.61. Uh, we could do that. We lose stability, get more work support, weakling manpower. That's not actually too bad. Consumer goods factories. You know what? We'll, let's look at this one first. And then we'll do Russian reunification. And to get a new focus tree, so. No, 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 no. Military austerity. No, 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 no. Cut that. Hey, our budget's not looking too bad. Let's do this one. There we go. Oh, we could invest in construction. Actually, that would have not been bad either. And, oh, let's go do this too. Hey, 20% more stability. Not bad. And more naval XP. The Russian National Reclamation and Government is alive. Let's go ahead and exert influence. That'd be great. And then we can core them too. Ah, good. The Reclamation Government. We have, again, expanded. From one small chunk of Siberia, we've managed to grow, claiming all of Western Russia not held by the detestable Huns. We're no longer provisional in our authority. We are now the Na Russian National Reclamation Government, ruling over half of the non-occupied motherland. But this is not the end of the East. There are still pretenders, claiming authority over all of Russia despite the lacking the strength to reclaim it. Then there are the Germans themselves, still holding the most Western parts of the country in their vile claws. We must not stop until all of Russia is united under our banner and the Huns have paid for their horrid crimes. Absolutely. It's just disappointing that we can't do anything more here, but whatever. <clears throat> we can still do this stuff too, which is fine. Military intervention, we need more political power now. Which makes sense. Hey, 38% civility, not bad. Not bad. Now we got... Wow, that's actually really quick for that to happen. Ah, Salazar's victory in Portugal. Interesting. Alright, he's got a little drum there. Nice. Maybe some little snare player. Good. Happy 1970, everyone. Let's grab this because we're building this up quite a bit. And then get some more research speed as well. Good, 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 my friends. And then national survival... Poverty rate? Ah, uh, get more poverty rate. For Russia to survive, its people must survive, but they must do more than just simply survive. We need soldiers and workers able to perform grueling tasks for hours on end. For that to be possible, we must ensure their people are fed and content. A starving soldier simply can't fight as well as one who is fed, and an unhappy worker is a slow worker. Neither of this can be allowed. As such, national action will ensure poverty relief programs are put into place nationwide. No cadre will lack for food or shelter. The people will not have frivolities, but they will not want for basic goods and services either. <clears throat> Nando wonders. Uh... If you want to read about this, go right ahead. This happens pretty much every single campaign for an end of wonders. So if you'd like to read it, go right ahead. But we must continue on. National survival is probably a good thing. And maybe national reconstruction. Construction speed would be pretty good to get to. Anything over here? Nope. Oh, oh look at all the political power we have now. Military intervention. And since we can't do much with our political power... Actually, you know what? Let's save our political power. Because I want to core our, all the stuff when we get there. So that would be a good idea. One indivisible and invincible. Will Kovark, Yazov, head of the Black League and savior of the Russian people, stood stoic at the podium. He looked down at his prepared remarks and found them wanting. They were merely words on a page. He would give them the world more than an announcement. He would give them a declaration. To all the heroes of Russia assembled here today, he started off a bit shaky, his voice a little too monotonal over the microphone. There have been many who have told us of our imminent failure. Many who have doubted the will and strength of a people long under assault. Many who fear what we might become. They know nothing of the sacrifices of the Russian people who have been forced to make in the name of survival. But we know, comrades, we all know too well what was lost in the first trial. We know now what must be done. He began to speed up. His clenched hand wrapped around the podium and he leaned forward. Russia must be made strong again, and the Russian people with it. We must do this for our own survival. We cannot expect help from abroad, but the inner strength of our nation, of the people themselves, is a bottomless resource and has been tested time and time again. Well, we must use that now to construct a new Russia from the ashes of the old and do whatever is necessary to ensure that it survives forevermore. At stake is everything you know and the survival of every man, woman, and child in Russia. For if we were to fail and let the German reconquer and what he wills, or let the weaklings around us take power, the world will never again make the mistake of letting the Russian people reunite. But we will not fall or fail. For that I depend, Russia depends on your courage and skill. He relaxed as he wound down, his hand unclenched and he stood straight and spoke softly. Know that each of you pushes forward the day that we will all see Russia freed from its chains. Long live the reclamation government and the justice that it will bring. With one voice the answer came, long live the reclamation government. Bitter plants from bitter seeds. Very good. A little bit of lag, that's okay. Probably a little bit of auto-saving, which is totally fine with me. Oh, look at that manpower, finally. Oh, we're demobilizing too. Finally, we got some more... Manpower. How do we do that? Was it stability or something? Expanded auxiliaries, super regional recruitment, military assistance, no draft exemptions, segregated regiments. Huh. All right, we're still demobilizing a little bit more, but whatever. It is what it is. <clears throat> you know what? Screw. We're going to go four at a time. Uh, where's 100? percent There you go. National survival, social readout, expand the readout system. Uh, oh yeah, we're going to grab this. Requires one of the following on the international front of the Polkem. 
Potemkin program and in response it proved to be of great value. Potemkin convinced many American and other powers that Comrade Yazov is the best hope for Russia's future. While our illegals have silenced many voices that might have spoken out against the Black League, both of these efforts must be expanded. A massive propaganda campaign will convince the free world that the reclamation of government is no, no threat to them and the best counter they have to the German menace. While the illegals must be expanded to ensure that there are none in the Russian emigre community who would dare say otherwise. Very good. It's not much, but it's honest work. Assignments. The line to be assigned to a cadre had stretched far outside the small barn that Omsk men had set up at the HQ in the village. They promised food, shelter, and a community, which was two more things than any of the villagers had right now. But the little town near Samara was now a part of the league, and that meant that the people were in it too. A middle-aged man sat behind a desk as a mother and her child approached. Only one at a time, please, ma'am. Please, he's very young. I only wish to make sure the official raised his finger to cut her off. This is for me to decide. He shall serve the league in whatever way Russia requires. What is his age? He's only 16. Surely there's some work you can do. She began to whisper something away from the front lines. He was not 16. The official was quite aware that he was not 16. And still, he paused for a few seconds. He recalled that his own youth cadre, the punishments, the pain, as well as the brotherhood. His mother had no idea what being 16 in Omsk actually meant. What it required, his face grew blank as he accidentally stared at the boy. His pen hovered over the seventh card. If he were not 16, I might be able to assign him to an industrial cadre rather than a youth cadre. The official looked very purposely at the mother. Do you understand me? The mother watched as his sunken face turned towards her. There was very little to indicate any change in expression, except that the corners of his lifeless eyes seemed to twitch. And there was, in turn, a stubborn cheek, right cheek. Yes, he is 18. Oh, boy. <clears throat> I see. You're being assigned to Cadre 603481 in Luzino. Your son will be assigned to Cadre 704821 Sverdlos. Do not pack anything. You will be transported tomorrow. Say whatever goodbyes you need to. It is unlikely that you will ever see anyone here again. But surely he could say with me and do not test the limits of my patience. You will find them short. Small mercies. Expand the system. Context of Muscovine. Oh, Ooh, industrial equipment. I like that. Building slots too. Trials. Army of professionalism. Jesus Christ. National reconstruction. The war in the West Russia has left the land devastated. The roads torn apart. Factories destroyed. Mines damaged. Farms left abandoned. Entire cities gutted. This must be corrected immediately. West Russia is not the only critical region in terms of industry and resources. It is also our border with the Huns, meaning it will be on the front lines when the great trial begins. Every farm that lay fallow will mean rations our troops won't get. Every road that remains damaged means it won't be much harder to get men and supplies to the front lines. This must be corrected immediately. Reconstruction of industry and infrastructure in West Russia will be made a national priority. Any cadres with a designated beginning with six, seven, eight, or nine that can be spared will be sent to the region, and new cadres will be formed with all haste. West Russia must be ready for the great trial ahead. Everything is for the great trial. Every single little thing that we do must be for the great trial. Uh, cap? I like cap. 15% is just too good. It's just too good to pass up, man. Eh, we're looking much better here. How's this looking over here? One, two, three, four. Not bad. Keep it on four for now. After that. National Reconstruction. Oh yeah, and I got even more political power. We don't even have one a day though, which is really big sad. It's better army professionalism. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. Um, I think we already read this. Oh, actually, I don't think we read this, but it just kind of already upticked. Excellent. More attack, defense. This is beautiful. I love it. And now we're on spot and discipline for the Russian National Reclamation Government. I pity those who have to fight us, but it will be a glorious war against them. Actually, when can we go to war with these guys? And about a month, which is not bad. When it is time to go, go right ahead. Oh, 17 and 17, not bad. And there's only 20 combo with, but that's alright. Dewarlordization training? Let's see, a societal readout. West Russia is to be on the front lines when the Great Trial comes. Places like Vyatka, Samar, and Gorky will be the first to suffer Germany's wrath. From the renewed bombings to missile attacks, and the unlikely event Germany ever steps foot on our land, it will be there when its vile feet will tread. To that end, the national readout must be expanded into the region. New bunkers built and industry moved underground and when possible. Garages will be drilled and evacuation plans so there's no mad rush to the designated bunkers when the Great Trial begins. The people may complain, but they will be just and appreciated in time. We will not allow the Huns to reduce this land to anarchy once more. Aw, oh, yeah. And how's this looking? Five days? Not bad, my friends. I can't wait to invade. Nighttime rumination. A lambent sl sliver of light silently shot across the Siberian night sky. Kostya cranked his neck. Uh, momentarily forgetting the fatigue of late night exercises, the celestial visitor burned brightly for a few seconds before fading with a soft finality. His departure is sudden as his disappearance. What was that? Vladim asked, not taking his eyes off the forested horizon that encircled their shared foxhole. Shooting star, Kostya replied lazily, reclining back against the foxhole's rough hewn 
hewn law wall. Fifth one this night. You see anything? No, I thought this was your turn sleeping though. Can't thinking. But what? Shooting stars let him shot across you an odd glance. You ever feel really I don't know small? No, wait, what do you mean exactly? Like, relatively to the universe. I was just thinking, Vladimir half-jokingly rolled his eyes. You know, that shooting star must have been up there in space for, I don't know, millions of years. All of human, human history. It was just sitting up there, orbiting, or whatever. Close to you up, where are you going with this? Think about it, Vladim. For God knows how many years, this little space rock was destined to be here at this time in this place, and there's nothing humanity could have done to change that, but... Buharin could have won the war and still be there, right there at the very moment, regardless of what happened on this planet. You and I could be dead or both have never been born. I get the point. So what you're saying is, what I'm saying is that sometimes I feel like everything we're doing here is in the league. Heck, as human beings, it's just so small. The world just goes on. Vladim shot him a look, not a disapproving one, but one that they, perhaps everyone in the Black League, knew well. Yeah, I know, Kossi replied. It's just that I can't help but feel this way. You should really get some rest, man. Yeah, probably should. But guns? Guns, anybody? More guns? More trucks? Yes. I want to cut, 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 cut. More efficiency. I feel like I'm like Robert McNamara in the U.S. Give me the numbers. Uh, expand the State Development Directorate. The industry of West Russia has operated under a myriad of organizations for far too long, with some critical industries being run by corporate interests. For the greater prosperity of Russia, the State Development Directorate will be expanded into the region. To ensure our economic security, certain measures will have to be enacted. All vital industries will be nationalized, quotas will be put in place, and workers' rights will be restricted with all strikes banned. Any notion of disobedience will be dealt with by force. The South Party will find these measures extreme, but time will show that these measures are absolutely 100% necessary. And like I said, I'm still saving up political power for this stuff, so... We must wait. We must wait. Here we go, my friends. Time for war. Which I don't really care about right now. Since I, I'm not even going to be bothered looking at it. They have 15 divisions, which is not bad, but... Honestly, we're probably just going to be moving in and having a good time. No, waste not, want not. Total mobilization. We lose political power, which... Oh, I don't like that. Especially when it hurts our consumer goods factories and civilian construction speed. Fires of heck. Well, de-warlordization trials. Outside, the last remnants of the WRF, the warlords that infested West Russia were among the worst to be inflicted upon the motherland. Traitors, tsars, and generals imposed by their invading Huns, madmen who sought to turn themselves into our greatest enemy while keeping most of the people enchained. Even those not beholden to the Germans were a little better. Republics to be beholden uh, to the Germans were a little better, uh, beholden to their ideologies to ever make Russia strong enough for the great trial. Ah, oh, man, my, line, my eyes skipped a line there. Justice against these traitors must be swept and without mercy. All should know the price of betrayal and failure. Yeah, how are we doing? We've killed off triple what we saw last time, which is not bad. Actually, if that's the case, uh, I want to double these guys, too. We should have enough planes to do this as well. Good. Uh, you guys go right there. That's fine. Hey, we got another division out, too. Nice job, guys. Oh, Kurdistan. Oh, actually, Kurdistan's on fire. Ah! Good. Great, great, great. Wow, 300,000 manpower is just so nice to have. Oil crisis erupts. People do not word, they want the sound of battle, the battle of destiny. Yeah, not bad. What are these templates like? Uh, t probably 20 combo width. Oh, we actually have IFVs there, huh? Probably, t maybe 20 combo width? Probably more like 10 combo width. Even when we cut the military budget, with spontaneous discipline, our soldiers are doing great. Good. Wow! Well, hold on, the GDP went back up again. It was 9.4 earlier, now it's 9.9? .9? Nice. Cut it down anyways, I don't care. Ah, mob military factories, good. Are we still locking tanks and APCs? Yep, tanks and APCs are the biggest ones. They're the biggest culprits. I actually got 20 on these guys, Jesus Christ. The warlordization trials, next up. Reintegrate the armies, yes please. The various warlords who dominated West Russia produced a number of ideologies, none of which translated into armies worthy of the name. Republicans, monarchists, madmen, traitors, all of them produced armed forces that mounted to little more than poorly trained mobs and paramilitaries armed with scavenged and outdated equipment. Even the WRRF produced an army far below what would be needed for the Great Trial. But the men of these armies can be reshipped and made useful, reforged into true soldiers of the Russian National Army. The women will serve in non-combat roles regardless of what role they given they once had. What little discipline was instilled in them will be hopefully prepare them for the serving the reclamation government. Trial number 59. The convening authority of the Black League, Samar District, hereby orders this court martial of... The officers flipped up the page. Nikolai Gurovich, former deputy to the economics minister of the Committee of the Liberation of the Peoples of Russia. Is that correct? Yes, replied Gurovich. He felt deathly uncomfortable in the solid wood pew and scratchly, scratchy prisoner's uniform he had been provided with. He looked at the black-clad officer who leered down at him from beneath his cap. 
His hands began to twitch. You're aware of the illegitimacy of this government and the disunity has caused the nation of Russia, correct? Yes, please. I was merely an officiary. I was not involved with the war. I immediately offered that we have no further need of you. Your sentence has been rendered. Sergeant, please remove this man. He felt his hands... He felt hands below his shoulders. He tried to speak out to say something in his defense, but there's no words that would make an ounce of difference now. He was half carried and half walked to a concrete courtyard. There was... This is where the shots have been coming from. But I, I wasn't anyone. I wasn't a, a what? No, no. All right. Read out Arkhangovsk. All right. Three is not enough. Three will never be enough. Four is always minimum. And we might make it five eventually. The fate of the pretenders. Nyan, please. Your use of discussing Germanic tongue disgusts me, whelp. We have raised your hideouts, slaughtered your fellow pretenders, obliterated your divisions, and you have the audacity to speak in a language which threatens the Russian state? Without a single chance to respond, the member of an Aryan Brotherhood diplomat, or person, who would kill them off. Combat unit was swiftly executed with a pistol shot, falling forward into a shadow dirt hole. He was, one, he was one of the many on his knees, blindfolded, in a line facing a makeshift mask gra grave dug swiftly after the aftermath of the final battle against the uh, against superiors. Cadre 227719 was assigned to liquidation of several units of men who had surrendered against the might of the R Russian reclamation government. Upon orders from Yazov himself, no mercy was to be shown. Any single man who was held a rifle in the treasonous acts of Teutonic appeasement was had to the life taken. Cries were heard from some of the men. Others breathed heavily while others waiting their imminent fate. A member of the cadre stepped behind another traitor on the ground with the blindfolded soldier sniffing rapidly. The roaring fire of artillery in the distance macked another shot and with its brass expelled from falling onto the ground below. Another thought, another traitor to the motherland deep in the grave. This was not the last scene of this, uh, last of the scene, and many like this were happening across the former territories of the Aryan Brotherhood. Justice had been finally served in the Russian anarchy, and every pretender in the grave would prepare Russia more and more for her upcoming great trial. Teutonic appeasers will rot six feet underground. And we saved up all this political power for exactly this moment. And it's still not enough. I should not have done this one then. Whatever. Noble Sibirsk. The Central Siberian Federation must die. They are in the way of the Great Trial and its progress. Ah, glorious. Integration of all armies. For far too long, Russia has not used all of its strength to overcome its challenges. All must serve and must be given everything to the cause. This includes fighting on the front lines and women who have been overlooked unnecessarily for the solemn duty. This has shortly come to an end. A series of orders begin to reintegration of women into the front line units has been put into all cadres. Ranks are now being filled with women as well as men with equal training and standards for all. The boost in manpower and the skill of these heroines is a welcome addition to our forces and is absolutely necessary for the task ahead. They will serve as well as anyone else and bring help forth the united Gup Russia. Today, a thousand female voices all over the reclamation government have declared, I believe in Russia, one indivisible and, inv and invincible. I believe in my own strength and my strength of my comrades. I swear this oath by my sacred motherland. Ooh, get more population. We lose a little bit of stability war support, that's okay. That's totally okay. 20% of recruit population factor is really nice. Beautiful. Venerate the front. Onwards to Berlin. I like this the war support. For us to win the great trial, the people of Russia must believe we can. The workers believe that shells they are making are for their hopeless cause they want to put much effort in, leading to a poor quality weapons. Low morale could just be as dangerous to us as the Huns. To counter that, we're creating a propaganda campaign, posters, banners, speeches, and even speeches, and a few more. Movies. All of which will show the Na Russian National Army slaughtering the armies of the Reich, flying our banner atop the ruins of Germania, where the injustices dealt to us repaid with a hundredfold. This campaign will show the people that when the great trial begins, we will win and justice will be done and accomplished. Beautiful, my friends. Onwards to Berlin. The Hun must die. Contacts in Muscovy, though. Muscovy, on the side of Germany's greatest crimes against her kind, will be on the front lines when the Great Trial comes. It'll be there when it'll be won or lost. It'll be there when Germany's destruction will begin. Through, though the Great Trial is years away, we must begin seeding Muscovy for Germany's downfall. Sleeper agents will snuck over the border. We'll sneak over the border, infiltrating the slaves and collaborators, learning what they can about Germany's operations in the area while laying the groundwork for future sabotage efforts. These agents risk a great deal, but their efforts will prove more than worth it when the Great Trial do, does begin. Marching on, the following is distributed to all frontline cadres following an announcement of Glockovic Yazov. Soldiers of the Reclamation Government, to you falls the great task and the great honor of taking back the lands that Germany has stolen from us. Your trials will be many and your hardships will be unbearable. So for the sake of your children and your children's children and all of Russia's people, you must persist in bringing justice to Germany and safety to our lands. We must unify all Russia under our banner, for Russia cannot be disunited or weak to accomplish our glorious aims. We have seen previously what disunity and backstabbing can do even to our determined people. This must not occur again, this will not occur again. The Black League will make it so. Only then can we accomplish our true task, bringing justice to the oppressors in Germany and the puppet state that now holds Musk Muscow. We shall scatter them before our might and show them the same mercy that they have shown to all Russians. They will be erased from the world and the good riddance to them. We shall accomplish this task for the sake of all people, all free peoples. In doing so, we assure Russia's safety and the safety of the world. The justice of our state is clear. The implements of the destruction of Germany are in your hands. Let us go forward in a righteous anger unto Moscow and onwards to Berlin. 
four, not bad. Nope, I said four, not three, four. What part of four do you not understand? Nice, that's getting slightly better. Context of Muscovim. Venerate right the front. Moral Shilov, Zukov, Tukhachevsky, the generals of the West Russian Revolutionary Front are admirable, as they are their soldiers. They fought against the Germans for decades, after most had given up or turned traitor. Tukhachevsky, in particular, showed a strength few outside of the Black League had displayed. They were almost strong enough to lead Russia in the Great Trial, almost. Their adherence to the Bukharans' old order and communist ideology weakened them and ultimately proved to be their downfall. Despite the misguided blitz, the WRF should be venerated. Its soldiers and generals given amnesty. They may not be fit to lead our country, but they are still capable generals. We could use men like these for the Great Trial, once they've been properly retrained, of course. Person identity card doc five one five two one one zero six seven Yuri Starnov date the fifth May eighteenth nineteen forty two ID height okay eyes are gray sex yes please M Yuri couldn't stop staring at this new identity card a thin slip of card paper would would decide whether you lived or died getting through Muscovine's infamously porous board would not be difficult but staying there undetected and carrying out his assignment certainly would be. He had been charged as part of the new infiltration program to signal back any information he could find about Muscovine's vulnerabilities. Drozdov himself had been sent them off with encouraging words about how they would be the first echelon, the tip of the spear that would retake the nation's land. Troops, dispositions, popular unrest, partisan groups, infrastructural weaknesses, and anything that would help in the assault, whatever came. It was time to start off again. He would cross the board in fading light and just likely go through several checkpoints just the next day. But if he was ready, he grabbed the hand bearers or handlebars, flicked up the kickstand, and started dragging the motorcycle towards the forested stream that would be his crossing point, working a shadow to serve the light. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. And I know I'm trying to make this episode a little bit longer compared to tomorrow's episode, so... Uh, good. Do that, too. Venerate the front. Escalate Potemkin. Despite our best efforts, much of the world still thinks little of the reclamation government, viewing us a little more than thugs dressed in black. While some are perfectly content with the situation, holding some little love for those who failed the motherland before, we still have a need for those foreign powers and to support particularly the U.S. To help in these efforts, the Potemkin program has invited an American film crew and sh in to show the world that Comrade Yazov simply wants to rebuild a Russia that is strong and prosperous. The Americans will be given a guided tour of our great nation, showing how prosperous our nation has become and how content our workers are. From there, once we inspect their footage, they will release a documentary that will hopefully convince the Americans that we are Russia's best hope and a bulwark against the Nazis, under a different flag, though. A hundred men stood assembled in the courtyard as a black-clad officer stood under a podium before them. The old and young alike had shivered through the northern winters and endured the terrors of battle. This is what remained a former West Russian Revolutionary Front Infantry Company given general amnesty after the conclusion of hostilities. They were certainly needed now more than ever. Soldiers of Russia, you fought proudly in the defense of your homeland and your families. Though we may have been at odds before, we welcome you now as comrades in the same struggle against those who would seek to destroy our nation. Fight with us against with the same dedication and fury you've already shown, and we shall secure a place in the world for the Russian people and bring vengeance upon those who desecrated holy Russia. You must now recite the oath of the Black League. I believe, before all else in Russia, one indivisible and invincible. 50,000 manpower. Beautiful, my friends. And I think we might get another event as well. Maybe, maybe not. Whatever. Waste not, want not. It's time for the fires of heck. When the great trial finally comes, it is likely probably even that the German dogs will ram or rain nuclear fire upon us. Our cities will burn in fire, reduce the radioactive cinders. The terror bombings of the Luftwaffe will be put on a prim prick compared to what the atomic warfare will do to Russia. The national redoubt will not be enough to survive this. For Russia to survive, new bunkers must be built bigger and deeper. Many will be built outside of the city so that they're not subject to a direct strike. With shielded doors to protect against the radiation, with air filtration systems and enough supplies to ensure that the people can remain inside long enough for the fallout to dis dissipate. Even these new bunkers will ensure that nothing, not even the powers of the atoms, can rain or stop us in a quest of vengeance. Russia will survive no matter what comes. Comrades in arms, Ustinov and Yepishev were seated in full WRF uniforms, opposite a single empty chair. They did not look like defeated men, quite the opposite. As Yazov walked in and took a seat, they rose and saluted him as equals. Comrades, you surely know that I reserve the greatest respect for yourself and your former cause. I think we share many of the same beliefs and virtues I have, therefore, come personally to see if you would join us in a struggle against our hated enemy, the defense of Russia. The two generals simply stared at a few seconds, nearly expressionless. Over the long, awkward pause, Yazov grew anxious. Was he going to have them jailed, shoot them, these men who had fought for the nation so admirably? The two men opposed exchanged a few mumble comments. Yusin now snorted. Yepeshev looked concerned. After what felt like miss, with Yazov growing more impatient, they finally stood first Yusinov, then Yepeshev, then Yazov. Comrade, we would like be proud to serve under your leadership. Let us help the Black League restore the full glory of Russia. The two men snapped to salute. Yazov returned to the salute. As he turned and marched out of the door, he leaned on the table ever so slightly. It was good to have two honorable and trustworthy men that would aid or add unity to the cause. He was glad that he didn't have to shoot them. Keep your friends close, and your enemies even closer. Beautiful, my friends. That is a bunch of manpower. Totally a bunch. 600,000? Man, we keep just keep getting more and more. Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Rubber is missing. No, 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 no. No. We must prepare. And that means paying other people for more goods. So be it. Oh, we're looking really good there. 
Um, at this point, I'm gonna go and make these guys. Screw it. I'm gonna make all of you guys. 40 combat with. Now I'm gonna be making. Missing some stuff. Our own Hollywood. The Americans have agreed to lend us limited supplies in the form of filmmaking equipment and technical assistance, as well as agreeing to let a team of producer, director, screenwriter, and company staff to travel to Omsk to participate and advise in filming. We expect to make great and immediate progress towards our goal of completing the movie on schedule. Appropriate industrial and agricultural cadres will be conscripted for filming, specifically for scenes A15, A.20, and B11, which will require numerous extras in filming in large scale in industrial areas. We have commissioned one specifically outfitted helicopter for the occasion to be used in landscape filming. The corporate guilds have been informed of the development regarding American assistance and authorized filming to begin at once. Lights, camera, action, thank goodness. Oh, wow. That really kind of hurt us. How many do we have here? We got more than enough. Tanks and APC still? Alright then. 20, get to 30. And when you're done, train. Because it's not going to be enough. Fires of heck. The first draft? Why not? Sakharovsky has presented a plan to the Glakovark and is once again dubbed Operation Chernobyl. He argues that the land that was now known as Muscovy is lost to us, too polluted by Germanic settlers to ever fully be reclaimed. As such, it will serve as a staging ground for the opening phases of the Great Trial. Before the first of our troops could cross the border, Chernobyl caused for Germany to be de devastated by a series of devastating terrorist attacks centered on Muscovy. The land will be militarily crippled and divided before the tra Great Trial has even begun, leaving the path of Germania wide open for us. A cold, dark sea. Alexei nodded to the privateers opposed to him, or opposite of him, marveling inwardly at how cold this business was. There was no shortage of enemies he'd faced, no shortage of bitter reprisals and opposed hot justifications. And yet he was there, facing the men that internal security naval branch despised most of them all, the men and occasional women of the sea. Nikolaevich, their head, had been running the ports for as long as the Black League's long hauls in memory of him, and his motley little crew were whispering to have fingers in every pile of it this side of the Arctic Sea, including he whispered the Germans on fleets. Gentlemen, please sit down. There had been a time when Alexei, fresh from the Le League boot camp, would have gladly paid his own life to strangle the enemy of the state, but he'd grown into his long watch to understand the higher truths. There was an order to killing, and reason, and now he had reason to keep his men alive. Komosar Alexei Nikolaevich raised a gray flecked highbrow. What is the purpose of this visit? Targets and people. Alexei reminded himself, Nikolaevich, I have been ordered to bring you in, but the Black League seeks not to arrest you. Your talents are required. He gestured at the photos in the opening file before the moth. We seek reconnaissance, submarine and marine both. Your clippers are seaworthy and armed. We will bring them into the fold, and we will build your ships for you. You need to only say yes. As Nikolaevich rose to speak, Alexei held his hand up, and before you negotiate, you may want to take a look at the last picture. Nikolaevich flipped to the end of the dossier. His eyes turned cold, his face went white. A wordless murmur escaped his lips, and Alexei rose from his seat. We offer much, but never forget what we can take. Nikolaevich reports to the naval yard at 0900 hours tomorrow. Aim for the right targets, and people will follow. Blueprint for Armageddon. You also look at the line blueprints on the table. Six full floors with an elevator to the surface. A kink in the entrance to attenuate the radiation. All concrete rebar. Sealed doorways. Oh, CBRN resistant ventilation systems. Room for the nearly 300 people in the underground home. He traced his finger down the elevator and along the hallway to the residential areas. He'd, know, he'd, been, in, he'd been in enough bunkers to know that, what it would look like. He knew how the walls would feel rough and unwelcoming, but how the air would become, become stale. How the sounds would start to drive you mad after a few weeks. The engineer's voice snapped him out of his daydream. Current estimates are that it could survive a 5 megaton warhead detonating at dot 22 kilometers height at any distance farther than half a kilometer. Survivors would be able to continue operations without further supply for up to half a year, at which point pot potable water would be expended. Our estimated cost for each is 100,000 rubles, depending on terrain features. Naturally, they can be outfitted with additional modules for command units, armories, etc. to be designated at a time of construction. And it's also technical. Also deterministic. An engineer's solution to an apocalyptic problem. He's turning his hair back. I straighten his back and look at the man dead in the eye. Just begins construction immediately, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It's kind of long, so I really do appreciate it if you would leave a like. Subscribe if you are new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will finish this campaign and maybe have some nuclear hellfire. Maybe, maybe not. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great Russian rest of your day.